you're still God. Say you're, you're still, still, you're still God. Oh, I, I am secure in knowing that He's still God. Oh, I am secure in knowing. I am secure in knowing that He's still God. I, I am secure. I am secure in knowing that He's still God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm secure in knowing. I may not understand everything. Everything might not be good to me right now. But I am secure in knowing that He's still God. He's still God. Hallelujah. He's still God. Hallelujah. Things might be going on crazy around me right now. It may be unstable ground, but I'm still secure in knowing that he's still God. Hallelujah. And that's something to praise God about right there. Hallelujah. I'm secure. In no way that he's still God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm secure in knowing. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Why don't you just grab your hand, grab the hand of your neighbor right now. Hallelujah. As we go to God and pray. God, we come today to give you glory. We come today, God, to give you praise. We come today to celebrate your name, God. You're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Mm. God, as we worship today, we are secure in knowing that you still are God. You still rule. You still reign. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. Hallelujah. And God, we worship you in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. God, as we stand today, we pray for our neighbors. We lose strength to them. We lose encouragement to them. Hallelujah. God, you know the needs. You know the unspoken needs. Now, God, we are depending on you to bring us through and to bring us to an expected end, God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for what you're doing here in Shiloh Forestville. God, we thank you for what you're doing in Shiloh, Atlanta. God, we thank you for what you're doing in Shiloh, Bahamas. God, we thank you for being a God who is moving this people. God, allow us to continue to submit to your will and to do it as you see fit. God, give us an anointing. Give us an anointing, God, to do the work of ministry. Do, oh, God. God, do it for us now. Hallelujah. God, we're going to continue to praise you in this season of manifestation. God, we know that you're doing some things. You're going to do some things. And God, we're going to praise you in advance. Hallelujah. Before we get to that expected end, God, we're going to give you glory. We're going to give you praise. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We trust you in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Now, come on, loose those hands and give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just wanted to share a quick card before we get into the message. It says, I can't even begin to count the number of times I've counted on you. It says, you're, you, you've never let me down, my shallow family. Thanks so much for the calls, the prayers, and all the acts of kindness. There's no one like my Shiloh family. I love you all so much. This is from Mother Ma Betty. Amen. 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 Glad to see you in worship today, Ma Betty. We're praying for you. Praying that God would touch your body, and he has touched you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He's going to complete that work within you. Amen. 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 I want to uh, continue the series today on strategic moves. And today we're going to start, uh, I have uh, uh, various scriptures, but we're going to start today. Our spring, springboard, our initial uh, passage is going to start um, in the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter number 24. The book of Proverbs, chapter number 24. And I'm going to read two verses. I'm going to read two verses from the Message Bible today. Proverbs 24, verses 5 and 6. Amen. I'll be reading from the Message Bible. And it simply says here in uh, verse 5, it says, It's better to be wise than strong. Intelligence outranks muscle any day. (laughs) Strategic planning is the key to warfare. To win, you need a lot of good counsel. Amen. Today's uh, second title in this series, I want to um, talk about strategies for the next move. Strategies for the next move. As we consider this thought today, um, I want to make sure that you're aware that uh, the enemy, you may know this, you may not know this, most of, us, most of us do know that the enemy is trying to lure uh, many of us from our path and paths of destiny. The enemy, he's trying to disguise himself as an angel of light. And uh, for many, he, he, he tries to come across as a, a sheep. But in reality, the enemy is coming as a wolf. And I I want to come today to sound an alarm that we cannot afford to play around with the enemy any longer. Because he's literally throwing uh, everything at us. He's trying to literally, he's trying to destroy your witness. He's trying to to, to, to discredit your witness to discredit you. He's trying to destroy and to quell and quench your spirit. I believe in this message today that God really wants to give us guidance on how we should move strategically towards the next season in our lives. Proverbs chapter 23, verse uh, 7 a, the A clause, it says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. The first observation I want to lift today is we must first think strategically. We must first think strategically. Now, your strategy, it will begin with the way that you think. You cannot go into any kind of battle with an attitude of defeat. (laughs) You can't go into a battle thinking, oh, Lord, we're going to go. We're just going to go show up, but we know we're going to get our behinds beat. No! You got to go in there with a mindset, you know what? I'm going in. I'm I'm bringing my my reinforcements. I'm I'm bringing everything. Man, we're going to win this fight. 
you got to go in with a mindset that you're going to win. How many, how many witnesses do I have in this place that, that, that want to have a mindset of winning? You got to think your way through some things. The Word of God, it encourages us to think strategically through our situations and not limit the power of God. A lot of times we, we go through our, 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 our things that we experience, and, and uh, uh, sometimes we consult God second. <laughs> and uh, instead of consulting Him first, we try to do our own thing. We try to come up with our own scheme and own way. But God said, look, you need to consult me first before you get into trouble. Because if you don't consult me first, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> Amen. But he wants to give us a plan of action, I believe, to sustain us, to cause us to avoid trouble, and literally to get to the root of the plan of the enemy. And that's what we need to do. That's what we need to make some strategic moves. We need to get, in, get into a mindset where we are identifying what the enemy is trying to do to us and look and study the, the, the enemy. That's right. We need to study the enemy because he, he got us. He, he, he knows what we like. He knows our habits. Uh, he, he can pick up on things that, uh, 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 some things that we, we say. That's why we, we have to be careful what we say and we speak into the atmosphere. And he's, because he's listening. We need to get to the root of the plan of the enemy. Because he's cunning and he's going to try to get to our weak spots. And so this, this means, and the Bible tells us this, that, that we must be alert and sober yes. and vigilant at all times. And I, I believe that we must be alert and sober in the natural as well as the spirit. Amen. Now, I'm going to uh, say something, and uh, uh, I'm not going to, uh, uh, well, yeah, I want to offend you today. I often wonder why there's so many ABC stores, and y'all wonder, 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 wonder what the devil's an ABC store. Alcohol, beer, and whatever it is. I call them ABC stores. That's what they call them in the South. Some of y'all know, y'all know from the South. They call them ABC, the liquor store. I'm, you know, I've always wondered why in the devil there are so many liquor stores in our communities. I'm like, what in the world? Why? why? What, what, what is it? God, I'm asking God, what is it? Well, I believe it's a plan and a plot of the enemy to keep many in, let me just look around, many in the African-American community. Yeah, we got mostly African-American community. But he also, he messes with everybody. The Caucasians, the Hispanics, everybody. He want to get everybody off focus, but... I'm talking to us right now, but I just primarily wonder why in the devil is so many ABC stores in the African-American community? Why? Because I believe the enemy, he's trying to uh, uh, influence us. He's trying to bring chaos to the black family. I guess this is, a, is somewhat of a black liberation. This is just a part of the, the message. This is the, I don't mean to be a black liberation theologist today, but I'm, I'm talking to us, so I'm just going to say it. But I'm just trying to figure out why in the devil is so many liquor stores in our neighborhoods. Where the good stuff at? And I ain't talking about liquor. I mean, where the good stores, the quality stores? We got money. And we need to change our habits. We need to change our buying habits. Now, I don't know. That, that, that just came out of somewhere. I, I don't know where, but anyway. But I want to make us aware of the plan of the enemy. He's trying to keep us under an influence and trying to keep us off balance in the church. I'm talking to the church this morning. Oh, yeah. Now, I know some of y'all, now, now, I don't want no emails. I don't want no letters slid under my door. Keep it. The Word of God is right. We are not to be under the influence of anything. Now, I'm not going to go down a list, but I'm just going to give you a few. We should not be under the influence of any type of spirits, because that's what liquor is. It's a spirit. It causes you to get out 
from, 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 from under your normal uh, patterns of thinking. Black and mouse, we it influences you. He's trying the enemy is trying to get you off focus. He's trying to destroy your testimony. He said, Yeah, look at that Christian. There, they call and try, call themselves name of the name of Lord Jesus. Yeah, that's he's trying to destroy our testimony. But the devil is a liar because now you know. He's trying to destroy us. But now it's time for us to think strategically. We got to think our way through some stuff. We got to close the door on something. We have the power on the inside of us to do. We have dunamis power, and we need to learn how to tap into that thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I'm going to hit something else. I'm ready today. We have to strategically think about our individual lives. If you're married, think about your current state of your marriage. If you're single, think about your singleness. Because what's going on is that the enemy's trying to get into relationships. He's trying to get into the mind of single people to influence us, to get us off balance, to knock us down, to influence us. And I believe that God does not want us to fall into any traps that will affect our future. Because that's what the enemy's trying to do. He's trying to affect our future. He's trying to mess us up. He's trying to come in and, and to destroy the destiny. And nothing can, can, can destroy the destiny of God, but he's trying to delay it. Because I've, I've, come, to, I've come to find out that the, the will of the Lord will be done. And we need to come to a point of saying yes. Some it takes a little bit longer. <laughs> You've got to go through some things. But I'm trying to help you. You don't have to do some things. And I'm, talk, I'm still talking about the marriage. And I'm still talking about the singles. He wants, the enemy is trying to affect our future, our now and our future. So you, we must be careful not to let the enemy control our thinking. Because I believe when we allow him to control our thinking, it has the potential to delay and to keep us from obtaining the victory. So this tells me that we need to learn how to identify anything that has been a hindrance. That's why it's important to talk as married couples. And singles, you talk to yourself. You, amen. I'm, I'm hitting everybody today. Wherever you fall, you, you pick it up. You got to... Uh, let me stay here for the, with, the, with the marriage for a second. You got to talk to each other. How many married couples do I got in here today? The, 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 the enemy, he trying to wear us out. He trying to, he try to, he try to bring the, 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 some of the smallest stuff, and some of the smallest stuff can turn in something, into something big. And we're trying to figure out, well, how in the world did we get here? How in the world do we get here? And the singles, he's trying to get you all focused. He's trying, he's trying to bring that old booger in your life that you, that you used to have, have, that you used to have, that you used to have uh, spend time with, that you used to hang out with. And he's trying to get, he's trying to get you all focused. He's trying to get your attention and trying to get you uh, uh, out of focus from your destiny. He's trying to get you off track. So we got to learn how to think strategically. Ask God, God, get, when you get up in the morning, God, give me a strategy to, to walk right today. Give me the strategy. God, if something comes my way, God, give me a door. Because you know what? He will give you a door, but we got to go through that door. The, the Bible says he will give us a way of escape. Now, some of us don't want to escape. <laughs> but the Bible says he will give us a way of an escape. So we need to be strategic in our thinking. The second observation is that we need to learn how to pray strategically. We need to think strategically, and we need to learn how to pray strategically. The Bible tells us here in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verse uh, 40 and 41, and I'm reading it from the Message Bible today. It says, and this is talking about Jesus, Matthew 26, 
40 and 40. It says, when he came back to his disciples, he found them asleep. <laughs> he said to Peter, can't you stick it out with me for a single hour? And then he came back and said, stay alert. Shiloh, stay alert. Be in prayer so you don't wander into temptation without even knowing you're in danger. There's a part of you that is eager, ready for anything in God. But there's another part that, <laughs> that's as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. Wow. Now, this tells me today that we must be persistent in our prayers and not to get weary when it's good and certainly when things get a little lean and a little tough. We should not get weary in our prayer, in our, in our focus, in our things, to, in, 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 our, in our lifestyle, in our thing, in our thinking towards God. The enemy, he wants to lure us asleep. <laughs> he wants to lure us, to, to lure us as, uh, to, uh, asleep with distractions. And some of these distractions, they really don't matter. He uses people. He uses things that are attractive to us. So the question is, what or who has your attention? The Bible is implying to us that we need to wake up. And we all must pay, pray in a way that, that we don't wander into temptation. It's easy to wander. You know, uh, it's almost like a little child. You know, you, you try to train, train your children, and Michaela was famous for this. She would try to wander off and she, because she would have, uh, she just had an inquisitive, and I'm talking about her today, but she had an inquisitive imagination, and, and her mom got her a lot of time and said, don't you wander away from me. You stay close to here. But Michaela, sometimes if she had a, something on her mind that she wanted, and she still is the same way sometimes, even in her, in her young adulthood. We try to keep her on focus and say, Michaela, don't do it. Yeah, I'm preaching, but she's going to get me later. <laughs> but that's the plan of the enemy. He's trying to lure us off and out of focus. Wake up. Wake up. Some, for some, the enemy is literally trying to get you to throw in the towel. Because of what you're going through, some of the life experiences that you have gone through. The enemy is trying to get you to throw in the towel, but the devil is a liar. You got to strategically think about it. Strategically pray and say, God, give me a strategy so I can know how to move right now and tomorrow. <laughs> that's just, now that's a strategy. God, right now and tomorrow. So when I get to tomorrow, something is going to be different when I get to tomorrow. And then after tomorrow, God, give me another strategy for tomorrow. You got to pray daily to stay focused. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This thing is burning on the inside of me. Whew. My God. We got to learn how to stick out the hard things. Stick out some, stick, go through some things. Yeah, we might have some scars, but the scars just mean that we got through it. I'd rather have a scar than not be here. A scar says, I went through it. A scar says, I, I had to go through some experiences. A scar says, I learned something. A scar says, I'm still standing. A scar says, I shall be victorious, even though I hurt right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's time to activate dormant areas in your life so that you will do the acceptable will of God for your life.
and what happens is when you, when you make a determination to activate some things in your life, he will change your thinking. He will put a fire into your prayer life. He will cause you to walk differently. The text says the enemy is trying to catch us off guard like a sleeping dog by a fire. Y'all, some of y'all, y'all know it's real comfortable when you, when you have a fireplace. You, oh, God, you, you get nice and lowered and you get relaxed. That, that, but the enemy is trying to catch you off guard. He's trying to catch you off guard. That's what the Bible says. But what we have to do is not let opportunities pass us by because of our laziness and also being passive about some things. I want to say, I want to say, you have destiny inside of you. And your destiny is connected to what you pray and what you say. I'm going to say that again, just, just in case y'all might be, I, I wake up in here. Your destiny is connected to what you pray and what you say. So I got another question for you. What are you talking about? Is it good or is it negative? Is it life-giving or is it speaking death? You, we have to learn how to watch our mouths so that it will not delay or even cancel the future. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 and 24, death and life are in the power of the tongue. I'm reading from the Amplified here. And those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and then bear the consequences of the word. I want good consequences. How many want good consequences? I want good consequences in my life. I believe everybody hand ought to be raised for that one. I think that's a good tweetable right there. You... Con it's, my God, the Bible says consequences. We, 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 we have, we, 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 we will bear the consequences of what we speak. I'm going to read it again just to make sure y'all got I'm giving y'all some word today. Yeah. I'm going to read it one more time just, as, just in case you missed it. <laughs> it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Your tongue, what you speak. What you mutter under your breath. <laughs> and those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. Speak life in your spirit. Speak life into your present situation. And also, speak life into your future. My God, some of us, we're thinking about just now. But God, I believe he wants us to think strategically about our future. Yes. Not just what we're doing right now, but God, what, I, I want you to do some things for me next year. Yeah, I, I, I ain't worried about this year. God, I know you're going to do some things this year. I know you're going to do some things. But God, I'm speaking now to my future. I'm speaking to my future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, it's time now for the saints of God to dismantle the plan of the enemy and the plot of the enemy. It's time for us to take control of our own destinies. Hallelujah. Take control of your own future. God's going to do his part, but what are you doing? We need to think strategically. We need to pray strategically. My last observation is... We need to praise strategically. And I want you to know that praise is just not something that we wait to do on Sundays. My God, I had a good time in the office this week. Uh, I don't know what it was. Oh, it's a new song that's on um, um, J.J. Harrison's. And I guess it was a praise break or whatever. But my God, they were singing something. I got to go back and, and uh, uh, listen to it. But that thing, it just got into my spirit. 
and the praise, the personal praise broke out in the office. <laughs> Minister Stander, as she don't know, sometimes if I'm real quiet, I'm, you know, I'm reading, whatever. But um, I had a good time in the office. <laughs> I like to tore that office up this week. <laughs> because I, I was thinking about my, my now. I was thinking about a few weeks from now. I was thinking about the end of the year and where, where, we're now, where we are now. And thank God we're not where we were last year. Woo! I think all of us got a testimony right there. None of us are where we were last year. God is bringing us. He's taking us somewhere. And I praise God for, for what he's doing in, 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 in myself. I praise God for what he's doing in, in you. I thank God for what he's doing in Shiloh. Yes, I'm happy. I'm jumping up and down. Yes, I'm excited about our future together. Hallelujah. And I, so let me get back to this. I was, just, I was thinking, I was praising God strategically. I was thinking, I, I got to take my wallet because it just is weighing me down. God, is that a sign that the increase is coming? Hallelujah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Increase is coming. We got to think strategically. If you don't, if it's, if, it, if it's not in your pocket yet, you got to start thinking strategically. Hallelujah to God. And pray that God will open some doors. I'm going, I'm going to get back to praise in a minute. But you got to think your way through it. You got to think your way to into your future. Hallelujah. And praying, God, give me, give me, give me ideas. Many of you have ideas. Many of you have, have giftings and anointings that you're leaving dormant. But the Spirit of God is saying, wake up. Wealth is in your mouth. Wealth is in your spirit. It's time for you now to unleash what he has deposited in you. Now is the time. Not tomorrow. Now is the time, Shiloh. Hallelujah. Okay, let me get back to this. But we need to learn how to praise strategically. We need to learn how to praise God on purpose. We need to learn how to praise God in advance. Praise Him before things begin to manifest. We need to learn how to praise and thank God for accomplishing his purpose in our lives. And how many are now beginning to praise God for accomplishing his purpose in your life? Yeah, things might not have gone well right at that moment, but it was a part of the process. Thank God for it. You learned something there. That's right. Praise God strategically because what you're going to do, you're going to usher yourself into your future. It's not going to be delayed. Hallelujah. We need to learn how to use praise as a weapon. And I believe that we have been given permission to use it at all times. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, David said in Psalm 34, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's what David said. So I'm going to take a page out of David's book. We need to praise our way into in our situations. We need to praise our way into our next. We need to praise God into our future. Ah, uh, yes, the Message Bible puts it this way. I bless God every chance I get. And I believe there were some people who came to church today with the determination that I'm going to bless God every chance I get. The Bible says that I, lead, I live and breathe God. He wants us to live and breathe his word. Hallelujah. And then it says, if things aren't going well, hear this and be happy. Praise God in your situation. If it ain't going well right now, praise God until it happens. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just told y'all a minute ago, some of us need to catch up in our praise. 
and we need to start strategically praising God. God, I might not have everything I want right now. God, I may not have what what you said is mine right now. But God, I'm going to praise you in advance. I'm going to praise my way into the future. And this means that we ought to have a perpetual praise. And you know what a perpetual praise is? It's a continuous praise. It's a thing that does not stop. You're going to be praising God in your sleep. Praise God before you go to sleep. Praise your way to sleep. As a matter of fact, some of y'all been having problems sleeping. Praise God strategically. Praise God for the spirit of heaviness. Praise God for the things that have been weighing on your mind. And when the thing was, what's going to happen is you're going to praise your way out of what you're going through. Praise your way strategically what God is going to do he's going to use your praise to unlock your future he's going to praise use your praise to humble you his your praise is going to get his attention it's going to defeat the plot of the enemy I'm going to say it again your praise is going to defeat the plot of the enemy for you and your family and those who are connected to you. So your assignment is praise. Your assignment is to thank praise. Praise with your mouth. Praise with your hands. Praise with your feet. If you don't know how to dance, just leap, leap until it happens. Because when you pray, when you pray, you're going to open up a new door. You're going to open up your future. You're going to open up your next level of breakthrough. Let your praise usher you into your next season. Think strategically. Pray strategically. But you gotta praise strategically. He's given us weapons. He's given us the right weapons. Because the Bible says, <laughs> for our weapons are not called. Let me stop. But they're mighty. They're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Some of us need to praise for strongholds that are in your life. There's some strongholds that have been holding on to you. There's been some strongholds that are in your mind. If you praise God, something's going to happen. Something's going to break. Something's going to happen. Hallelujah. Increase is going to come. Deliverance is going to come. Liberty is going to come. Freedom is going to come. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. So your assignment on this week is to think, pray, and praise. What is your assignment? Think. Pray and pray. Tell your neighbor, thank, pray, and praise. As a matter of fact, we're going to start on number three right now. I need some good shout music. Because the enemy... He tried to make you think that your coming to church today would be in vain. But I got news for you. Your coming was not in vain. So, we're going to break up some follow ground. Woo! 
Woo! We're going to break up some stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your praise is just not a look. Your praise is symbolic of what's going to happen. Praise God strategically. Praise your way through your hard times. Praise your way. Praise your way through it. It might be hard right now, but praise. Hey. message today. What you have been going through. What you have been experiencing. It will no longer be a hindrance to you. It will not have control over you. It will not delay or cancel your future. It's over today. It's over today. Hallelujah. 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 This is your day of deliverance.
God is giving us strategic plans so that we will win. In the natural and in the spirit. Some of us have been a little bit off balance. We've been depending too much on the natural. Some of us have been a little too much spiritually minded, thinking that God is going to do it all, but he's waiting on many of you now to do something with the word and with the anointing and the power that is, in on, that is on the inside of you. Today is your day. You will no longer be held hostage to negative emotions. You will no longer be held captive to your past, but you are now released into your future. Hallelujah. You are now released. You are now released. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God. Don't leave the same way that you came. Don't leave the same way that you came. If it's something that you just need to pour out to God, you can just come to the altar. If there's something that you just need to pour out to God, it's just you and God. And God and you. If it's something that you just need to pour out and release, so that you can be released, you can come to the altar. If you need someone to, to pray with you, someone to pray with you, but if you just need to have some me time with God, you can come to, you can find a place at the altar. If you want someone to pray with you, someone will, will pray with you. But some of us, I feel it. Some of us just need, need to have some me time with God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Pour out your heart to God. Pour out your heart. Talk to God. Tell God what it is. Tell God what it is. That's your strategy for release. That's your strategy for your manifestation. Tell God about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 